Hi, and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead here despite the cold weather, and hopefully you are doing well. Please want to remind you that if you do have an adult or a young person who might be at risk, please check on them today. Make sure they're staying warm. There's lots of places that will help you throughout the day. We do love that you watch us right here on Charter Channel 8. Oh, slow down. I'm cold. I'm trying to talk fast. We do like that you watch us right here on Charter Channel 8 six days a week. We do want to encourage you, though, if you miss us for some reason, you can always find us on YouTube or blip.tv. And when you like us on Facebook, Leanne will be glad to upload the recent episode right to your Facebook feed. Easy way for you to keep connected with what's going on in your community. So check us out there. We're always looking for new ideas. If you've got an event coming up in your community and you'd like to see us talk about it right here on the Owatonna Today Show, you can give us a call at 390-5751. That's our producer, Leanne Alt's number. Or send us an email at owatonnatoday at charter.net and let us know what you'd like to see right here on the show. Great show coming up for you today. We are going to be talking to some band boosters. So stick around, find out how you can help with local music right here in Owatonna. We will be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. If clothing catches fire, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes catch on fire, do not panic and run. This only fans the fire. Stop where you are, drop to the ground, and roll over and over to smother the flames. Cover your face with your hands to protect your eyes and your throat and lungs from the burns. This has been a safety tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Hi, my name is Dave Olson and I'm with RNK Electric where we provide power to the people. We're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. We're talking about the music boosters right here in Owatonna. And I have with me, I have Polly Webke and two brothers, James and Herbie. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. How's everybody today? Good. 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 Yeah, it's you cold. Guys, I was gonna, are you wearing long underwear? I know this is this is what you do on a day like today. You talk about no, you don't have to tell uh. me that. Um, <laughs> Polly, I want to start with you, if you wouldn't mind, give us a quick idea of who you are and uh, what you do here in town. Okay. Um, well, um, I um, have lived here for several years, twenty some That's years. Several. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and my kids were very involved in music all through school. Uh, one is now. 20 and a sophomore at Luther and still sings. And um, Elizabeth is a junior this year, will be 17 tomorrow. <laughs> Happy and birthday, Elizabeth. Yeah, and um, <laughs> plays in the band and um, sings in the choir and carolers. And okay. so very involved in music. Um, and so I joined the Music Boosters Board, um, I don't remember how many years, four or five years ago, um, to support um, Music Boosters and um, music in our schools and community. Awesome, very good. All right, sir, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm James Rand. I am in the orchestra, the Husky Orchestra in uh, the OHS, and I'm the violist Okay, what, you, how old are you, what grade? I'm in ninth grade, okay, so okay. I am 15. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never know how old I am either, James. It works out um, yeah. So do you do other things besides band? Um, yes. I Well, I'm in choir, okay. this Husky Choir, and mm -hmm. I do a lot of, like I do the small group that we're playing in MBO. Nice. Good, good. So it keeps you busy, though. Yes, it good. does, good. definitely. Good. Sir? Hi, I'm Herbie Rand. I'm uh, a ninth grader in the OHS. Uh, I'm also part of orchestra. I'm a violinist. Mm -hmm. I'm part of the Varsity Orchestra. I'm also in Varsity Choir. Um, some extracurricular things I do. I do mock trial. I do um, music listening club and things like that. Good. So you, you keep busy as well. Yeah, definitely. Would, would you both say that music is a huge part of your life, though, on a daily basis? Gigantic. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's what's interesting, Polly, about the boosters is that um, I think there has been a trend in the past 20 years to kind of take music and put it on the back shelf. Sometimes other things, sports and those kind of things, have taken the front run. And so the boosters have said, no. <laughs> we want to make sure that these kids who are great at this get an opportunity to do it. Tell me a little bit about the music boosters of Oatana and what they do for the, for the community and for the students? Well, our um, official mission is um, supporting and advocating for music mm -hmm. and music education, so not just the classes, but outside, you know, um, fun things like this concert coming up, um, because we view it as essential to lifelong learning. And, you know, like these guys said, they're involved in a lot more than just music, mm -hmm. but I think um, music is kind of a universal language, mm -hmm. and um, they can take it with them 
you know, forever. Um, it's, it's lifelong. Um, and so we try to focus on that to help out the teachers and the uh, staff and the kids directly by buying, um, you know, we've purchased instruments. We provide scholarships for um, kids going to um, maybe all-state camp or, um, you know, going to study music um, after they graduate. Um, we have um, helped fund the all-city um, groups that come together in the spring and perform. So, um, you know, we, we pretty much put our money directly back into the programs um, in Owatonna and schools. And locally, making sure that they continue yes. here. And, yet you and, say gra- and um, grade, as far as grade, you know, it's K through 12. And, well, and beyond, are you talking about the all-city bands and things like that, the music groups? Right. The all-state um, and all-city are, are in our community. Okay. But we do provide some scholarship funding for um, kids that have, uh, like, once they graduate mm-hmm. and they um, are going on to study music. So, good, yeah. good. I want to talk to James a little bit about the boosters. <clears throat> How, and, you know, you are in music a lot, you're in classes and you're in lessons and you're in practices. How have you seen the boosters kind of help those kind of things? Um, I've seen that, well, especially the instruments that the boosters purchase for the schools. Of course, instruments, they go through a lot of them in the schools. Is it kind of, kids are kind of hard on them sometimes, so? Yeah. Well, or they freeze yeah. in weather like this. That, that is true, that is true. <laughs> yeah. in, in weather like this, they they don't hold up very well. No. So the boosters help with purchasing those instruments. Definitely. Um, I was talking a little bit earlier, a lot of the people who are involved in boosters, who maybe their kids are grown out of it, they still come to the concerts and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Can you? Does that make an impact on you to have a, a group of people watching you perform that are interested in what you do? Yes, that I like, I like that a lot because it, it helps you perform better, I think. To have those people appreciate what you're doing and that kind yeah. of thing. Good. Now, I know, um, Herbie, that we've got a special event coming up to help the boosters, because, you know, this does ma- money doesn't magically come off trees. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, money does not grow on trees. <laughs> okay, I'm sure your parents have, might have said that to you at one time or the other. Not yet? Okay, they will at some point. Trust me. It'll happen. When you ask for that $20 for gas, once you start driving, they'll tell you this. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, bit about this benefit concert. Well, this benefit concert raises money for MBO um, to purchase, uh, uh, like, instruments. And as um, Polly said, uh, the event is made up of uh, uh, students and teachers, um, a bunch of people involved in the music organization. Um, it will be happening um, this Saturday, the 11th, at 7 o'clock, um, and it's really great. So is there a cost to get into the event, or how does that work? Um, yeah, pa- Polly, I think, has more of the uh, information about that. Yeah, um, tickets are on sale. Um, Kotkeys has them and Tone Music, and you can get them from board members like myself. So if they hurry over to the studio, they can get one for free. Right. Um, <laughs> or you could, you could also um, go on our website, um, and I think she's got, a, um, got that printed. Um, it's musicboostersowatana.org. Um, and that lists all the board members. Uh-huh. You'll probably find someone that you know okay. um, and um, can you know look them up and give them a call. Or you could purchase them at the door um, if you choose. We won't turn anyone away. Um, although it, it's been pretty full the last couple of years. This, this is our fourth, fourth annual. Yes. And um, tickets this year are $10 for adults and $5 for students. Okay. So um, there's no, we've done reserve seats in the past. We're not doing that this year. So, um, And activity passes do not count because, okay. of course, we're trying to raise money. Right. So, this yeah. is a fundraiser, not just a regular right. event, like a, a choral concert. So let's talk a little <clears throat> bit about the people who will be performing mm-hmm. on here. Uh, this looks like it you guys could be related to the two of you. Yeah. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show this? Yeah. Really here, quick? I got one. Um, so right here on the front with his violin is a picture of Herbie. He Does played last year. Okay. Um, wow. Does, yeah. Is it? Are you kind of? You know, you're the poster child for yeah. the NBO. <laughs> I know. I'm flattered. That, <laughs> you're flattered. <laughs> um, you see, Gene and Jeff Elstead here. Um, mm-hmm. They did a, a number from Phantom mm. of the Opera, um, and then Mile Five. Um, not sure how they're participating this year, but they're participating, mm-hmm. um, and we'll have. Um, other staff members, lot, lots of staff members, and as Herbie said, um, students who are involved in music. Okay. Um, these guys are both performing in a quartet. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yep. Um, and I don't know who else is playing with you. Uh, Ash. Ash. Ashley Cologne. Okay. And uh, Sam Huntsman as a cellist. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so a string quartet. What are you going to? What will you be playing, James? Uh, we'll be playing 
Beethoven, Opus 18, Number 4, Movement 1. Okay, good. Now, you guys do perform also in competitions as well for the school, or do they not have orchestra competitions? Not this particular quartet, Okay. but we do things like we compete, um, ind individually we compete for things like uh, state orchestras, mm -hmm. which is a mid-level honor orchestra, okay. and things like that. So what uh, would you guys like to do with your music? What do you think, James? Do you see this as a career or just really something that you enjoy doing right now while you're in school? I think of it as definitely a hobby, something that I like to do in my spare time. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Th th that's Me hard neither. To say. I don't know either. I don't say. know either. <laughs> Herbie, do you have an idea of what you'd like to do? Oh, it, it's too early to tell. <laughs> There's so many options. <laughs> Good. Well, I want to talk to you as a parent, um, mm -hmm. being involved in the boosters, and the. I'm sure that you're looking always for people who'd be willing to step up and help with some of the volunteer opportunities. Besides this this program, what are some other things that people can do to help with the boosters? Uh, well, we do meet once a month, um, and you know. Um, that's how we get our stuff done. <laughs> um, but uh, there's always volunteer. We In the spring, we have a pancake breakfast that mm -hmm. also is a fundraiser. Um, so we look for help. We help out with the Pops concert. That's the big concert at the end of the year. Um, we do sit at tables at try to sit at tables at every concert that goes on mm -hmm. um, from elementary through high school okay. out in the lobby um, and promote our, our organization and, and help out the music. Mm -hmm. So um, I also want to mention quick, I know we we're oh, running out of time, ahead. but it doesn't state it on the poster this year, but we're also still having a silent auction, oh, good. which actually starts at 6. Okay. So if you want to get in on that, you got so to come, come a little early. early. And there will be out. some treats. Ah. Costa's candy oh, and well, Starbucks coffee. That's that's more than a treat. So, That's like heaven. I okay, give us the dates again, if you want, wouldn't mind, James. Um, when is the date for the event? Um, it is on January 11th at 7 p.m. Okay. And it's at the high school? It is at the high okay. school. Okay. And Herbie would give them one really good reason why they should come. Well, it's amazing. It's fun to listen to. It's Perfect. very enjoyable. Very good. Thank you, you so much, you guys, for your time today. Coming out on this weather, it was dangerous, and I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Thank All right, you. All right, we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town, and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself, and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Otana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. United Way of Steele County is all about seniors living with purpose and dignity. Building a community of giving. Children have a healthy start in life. Youth achieve their potential. Bringing neighbors together. Investing in education, income, and health. Please join us and all Jastin's employees by giving generously, advocating for a better quality of life, and volunteering your time to a partner agency. We all win when we... Live United! And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. I am Shelley Whitehead. I have with me Josh Sweet from the Riverbend Nature Center. Hi. Hi, it's good to be here. Thanks we're, for having we us. We really appreciate you coming in on a day like today. <laughs> Would you do real quick and let us know a little bit about yourself and what you do at the Nature Center? Sure. I, again, my name is Josh Sweet. I, I'm the Director of Public Programs at Riverbend Nature Center. I, I'm new here. I just moved to the area in September. <laughs> And uh, I'm glad to be here. So you are from Minnesota, though, so you understand the temperatures? Or are you, like, from somewhere south? Well, this is actually my uh, third winter okay. in Minnesota, so I, I've, I've got an idea of what I'm in for. A little for. bit, a little <laughs> bit. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad you're prepared a little bit for what's happening today. Sure. Um, Riverbend Nature Center, tell us, we've heard a lot about it. We talk a lot about it, about it here on the show. Tell us about the center itself and the importance to the community. Sure. So the, the Nature Center itself is 700-plus acres of uh, prairie, forest, and freshwater biomes. Uh, in Fairbow, Minnesota. And so um, is this something that's been, how long has the center itself been 
The Nature yeah. Center has been there since the 1970s. Okay, and is right. this part of the, the state government or is this a private thing? Uh, the city actually loans us the land okay. uh, that we use for the Nature Center. Uh, on the Nature Center property, we also have an interpretive center mm -hmm. uh, that has a lot of uh, animals and, and mounts and things like that for children and adults of all ages to explore. So what is, the, um, there's so much there and a lot of it is, it seems like you've really tried hard to keep it native to the area. What is the prime purpose of the Nature Center? What are you hoping to, that people will get when they come to, to experience Sure, it? so the Nature Center is meant to educate the public on the, the natural environment, the natural world around us. And uh, we do a great job of that through a, a, a variety of different programs at the Nature Center. Well, and that's what's interesting is this year you guys have taken a little bit different uh, viewpoint. You've decided to step out and try something new and you're kind of re Reaching specific genre, not genres, groups of people would be probably a better way to put it. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, sure. You have, I think it's maybe seven, eight different programs throughout this year that you've got going? Right. Uh, so this year we're introducing the In Nature series at Riverbend Nature Center. Uh, the In Nature series is designed to, uh, to bring different audiences uh, to Riverbend. Uh, the different programs we have are grandkids in nature, singles in nature, lectures in nature, women in nature, and a program called OWLS, which stands for Older, Wiser, Livelier <laughs> Seniors. And uh, all of these programs take place in the new year. Uh, they start this month and are a great way to, uh, to have everyone come out and connect with, with the Nature Center. Let's break that down a little bit by each group because I'm sure since you're specifically looking for specific age groups or types of people that you're going to be kind of working with that. So That's let's right. start with our owls, right. those very wise and lively seniors. Talk to us a little bit about what that program will look like. Sure, so the owls program is actually the first in the Nature Series that actually has already begun. Our next owls program takes place on January 15th. And it always takes place on the third Wednesday of every month. Uh, coming up on the 15th, we have a program called Snake, Rattle, and Roll. <laughs> and we're talking about reptiles of Minnesota and what they do in the wintertime. Mm. Uh, also coming up in the next uh, few months, we have conservation issues with our local DNR conservation officer, Lucas Belgard. On March, in March, we also have maple syruping. Mm. So those are the upcoming programs for our owls program. Something that would be really fun. I would like to know. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing birds flying around today and thinking, you poor thing. Right. <laughs> they're probably staying warm because they're flying around. Sure. But, you know, those are things that we think about on right. days like today. So then we have the grandkids in nature. Let's talk a little bit about that program. Right. So grandkids in nature is designed to help grandparents and their grandkids I, uh, bridge the generational <laughs> gap, if you will, um, by spending time together. Uh, this program takes place on the second Thursday of every month, and the first one comes up on January 9th. On January 9th, we have an Animal Ambassadors Meet and Greet, where uh, our participants will get to meet many of the live animals that we have inside the Nature Center. Uh, also coming up in February and March, we have Snowshoeing and a program called Forest Tales, where grandparents and their grandkids can read stories together inside the Nature Center. These sound like some fun things. Um, if you don't have a grandchild, can you still attend some of these events, or is it really specifically for that? You know, absolutely. The Nature Center is open from 9 to, to 5 uh, every day except for Sunday. So um, folks can come on out. We have a vast library. We have animals in the Nature Center and lots of things to explore within the Nature Center Good. itself. Good. Okay, now with the next one, Singles in Nature. Right, so Singles in Nature is designed for folks in their 20s and 30s who are looking to meet new friends or, uh, or foster new relationships. Uh, this program takes place on the third Sunday of every month, and the first one coming up on January 19th will be snowshoeing. Uh, in the future, we're also going to have cross-country skiing and maple syruping coming up in February and March. And it sounds like a really great way to meet some people who have the same interests as you are, that right. getting outdoors, enjoying nature, that kind of thing, you know, instead of on the internet, which you never really right. know what's exactly. happening. <laughs> cool. Um, and then what do we have for the next so lectures in nature um, is not on a certain day each month. It depends on our speaker's availability. But for lectures in nature, we are inviting different guest speakers to the Nature Center uh, to speak on environmental and historical topics. Uh, the first one coming up on February 20th is with aquatic invasive species specialist mm -hmm. Allison Gamble from Sakata Lake State Park. Uh, we also have one coming up in March called Bird Nests. How do they do that? <laughs> and this is with author Clay Christensen. Nice. Uh, so those are two very interesting lectures yeah. that will be coming up. They're approximately an hour in length, 
and uh, snacks will be served. Well, what's interesting about those, especially the aquatic one, I was hearing a news story today about talking about some of the invasive Asian carp that's coming right. in. And we hear about it, but to understand it a little bit more and how you can help, I think that's really smart. Right. Good. And then uh, the last one you have is? Uh, we also have women in nature. So we're inviting all the ladies to come out to the Nature Center to participate in different activities together. Uh, this is always on the second Friday of every month, with the first one coming up on January 10th. Uh, January 10th, we have a Leave No Trace workshop, as well as snowshoeing going on for the Women in Nature program, and also coming up cross-country skiing in February. Leave No Trace, let's just delve into that, because that fascinates me. Tell me sure. a little bit about what that means and um, how that can... How we can, why we should even care. Right. Yeah. Leave No Trace is probably the leading agency or the leading organization in minimum impact outdoor recreation. Uh, so the, the women in nature will be learning about uh, minimum impact outdoor recreation and how it applies to, uh, to Minnesota. Good. So, and just why, if you're out in nature, even if you're just like a hiker, you like to walk through well pathed places, maybe why you should consider being a little bit more careful with what you do. Right, exactly. Uh, the, the environment is, uh, is very fragile, and it's important to know those things when you're out there. Tell me a little bit about, uh, so the, the center itself is open, as you said, from 9 to 5 those days. Tell me what they will find if somebody decides, I've got some time today, I'm going to just drive there. Tell, them, tell me what we'll find. Sure. So within the 700 acres that we have at Riverbend, there are lots of fun things to do. Uh, in the wintertime, uh, the Nature Center is not closed. Uh, there are plenty of things to get out and do in the wintertime. Uh, walking along the trails and along the banks of the Strait River are, are neat places to see in the wintertime when the river is partially frozen. Mm. Uh, we have cross-country ski trails that are groomed uh, by some volunteers that we have at the Nature Center. Uh, we have cross-country skis and snowshoes to rent this year. Good. So folks that are looking to get outside and don't have their own gear can come to the Nature Center and see what we've got and see if we can't get them fitted with something that'll work. Good. Do you have a program ever for people who maybe, other than the ones that we've talked about, if someone just shows up, do you have someone who can maybe help them figure out how to use these things? Right, absolutely. Yeah. So a, a quick tutorial comes along with every <laughs> rental, and uh, we also will have some public programs throughout the season uh, to help folks uh, get outside in the wintertime. Good, good. You know, and it's so, it's so fascinating. I was recently out in Pennsylvania visiting family, and they said, why do you live in Minnesota? Right. Well, and these are these kind of things that can get out and see the beautiful, a different side of nature that you don't normally get to see in other parts of the country. Right. Yeah. Uh, in addition, coming up on January 26th is our annual Winter Fest, which is the family fun winter event where we try and invite all of the families out uh, to enjoy the, the winter time. Uh, we'll have sleigh rides, blizzard, mini golf, and, and a number of other activities that'll be a lot of fun. How can they find out more information if they're interested in attending these events that we talked about? Today? Sure. So all of these events are listed on our website and our Facebook page. Uh, our website is rbnc.org. Uh, the times, the prices, everything that you need to know about the event are all listed on the website. So the, this is a, a, such a, an asset to the to the area. This opportunity, Riverbend Nature Center. What are some? Are there some things we're looking at in the future of seeing bring to this center, or are there some exciting things coming up as far as the development of the center itself? Sure. So this is actually just the beginning of the In Nature series. Uh, throughout the rest of the year, we're hoping to develop art in nature and music in nature, where we we will invite local artists out to the nature center to spend time with with our guests. Okay. Good. And again, an opportunity to see maybe a different side of it. What are some of the maybe the the more hidden things that we might not know about the, the Nature Center that people should definitely check out? Well, there, there is a rising trend within outdoor recreation, and it's uh, called geocaching. Mm -hmm. And geocaching is essentially a, a fun treasure hunt <laughs> uh, that you can do with a, a GPS unit that we also have to rent at the Nature Center. Uh, these are open all year round. Uh, they're, they're there in the winter as long as, as uh, uh, there are, uh, they're there in the winter as well as in the summer. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, so you can come on out and, and go geocaching with your family, rent a GPS uh, from the building, and uh, it is a lot of fun. What do you, what are you looking for, specific landmarks, or what exactly? So there are, are treasure boxes, essentially, hidden throughout the Nature Center, and there are six of them on the property now. Okay. Uh, so folks can come on out and attempt to find them and sign their name in the logbook, and it, it is a lot of fun. So we talked about some of the things that, are, that happen during the winter, but as things start warming up, what are some of the things that people, families can do when they come out to the Nature Center when, during spring, perhaps? Sure. When things start warming up, we will have uh, public geocaching programs as well as archery programs, uh, and, it's, uh, and a lot of hiking to do around mm -hmm. the Nature Center as well. 
What do um, I think sometimes people wonder about their kids and that kind of thing. This is a very family friendly situation where they really are trying to encourage kids to be as active as adults, correct? That's right. So what are some of the special things that kids can find? Talk to me a little bit about the, the center itself and, and you talked about some of the animals. What animals sure. do you have in there? Uh, we have a number of animals including salamanders and also painted turtles. Uh, we also have a, a corner that's called the Kids' Corner, where parents can bring their kid and uh, let them enjoy kind of the, to the exploration area of the Kids' Corner. Oh, so there's so much to do. You've got to check this out. Right. Good. All right. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very for, welcome. Thank for you. For venturing out to see <laughs> right. us today. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. We're back. It's time to take a look at your community announcements, what's going on in your area. The Owatonna Art Center has some great January events available, including in the gallery, we have Ryan Swear and Ellie Kingsbury. They are um, a painter and a photographer. So check that out. The opening reception is from 1 to 4 this Sunday on January 12th. Also, Clay Basics, Intro to Clay. It's a studio for teens. Learn the ins and outs as well as the procedures of the Otana Art Center Clay Studio. So you're ready to pursue it anytime you want to. This is a free event coming up. And then also just want to give a quick shout out early later in the month. I'll be able to I'll be going to the Art Center to do some henna during their belly dancing thing. So come check that out. It's a really good time. Oatana Hospital Blood Drives open to community members on Friday, January 10th. Area residents are invited to donate blood at the Oatana Hospital. Um, the American Red Cross will be on site from 11 to 5 in the conference room, which is 1484. And volunteers from the hospital's auxiliary will also be helping with registration. To donate, in case you've ever wondered, to donate you must be a healthy person, that'd be great, at least 17 years old and weigh 110 pounds or more. Donors must wait 56 days between donations, so if you've given recently, make sure you figure that out. If you want to schedule an appointment, you can call Jenna Herzog at 507-977-2778. Oatana Hospital, as part of the Alina, uh, Alina Health, is going to host an informational session regarding Minsure, the new marketplace where Minnesotans can find, compare, and purchase quality health care coverage. It's free, open to the public. No registration is required. The session will take place Tuesday, January 14th at 8 p.m. at the Oatana Senior High School and it's Small Group Forum Room 333 at the School Street location. The event is being hosted in partnership with Minshewer. If you've been thinking about joining and you want to know more information, this is a great way to answer those questions so you're not so anxious maybe when you do go on the website, or maybe you don't need to at all, this will be the place to go and figure those things out. The Steele County Historical Society is pleased to announce its children's programming for Thursday, January 9th at 10.15. And at 6.30 at the History Center, the History Detectives is meeting at 10.15. This is preschool aged children. It's going to be a three-month educational journey through the legends and lures of Minnesota. The free programs are offered the first Thursday of each month. You can check that out and see if your kids would, they would, they'll like it. Take them, they'll have a good time. And the Steele County Historical Society, along with help from local veterans, is organizing a Veterans Roundtable. Another organizational meeting has been set for Tuesday, January 14th at 7 p.m. at the Steele County Historical Society Center. It's located at 1700 Austin Road in Owatonna. Thanks so much for joining us. Please stay warm. We'll see you on Wednesday. Have a good day.